Let me get into the Word. <laughs> Here's the message I have for you today. Here's the title. A man and his rooster. <laughs> rooster. A man and his rooster. Listen. But before I go, I need you to understand what a rooster is. Okay? Here's a rooster. <laughs> right? The rooster wakes up in the morning and he bit up. Number better. Stick his chest out like this. He gets ready and he releases a cock a doo doo doo. <laughs> right? This is a rooster I'm telling you about this morning. And this is what I want you to know something about this rooster. When he does that, you know what he's saying? This is mine. This chicken coop is mine. <laughs> These eggs in the basket, they're mine. These hens, they're mine. So it's a warning. If there's a rooster in the hood, <laughs> hey, you are not coming here because this is mine. Amen? That's a rooster. And I want you to know something. If you don't have a rooster, by the end of this message today, you're going to know why you need one. That's right. <laughs> because we all need a rooster. Yeah. Matter of fact, we all have roosters. Mm. When's the last time somebody told you you couldn't do something? <laughs> last time somebody, uh, somebody told you you wasn't going to be able to do it. You ain't got enough money. Somebody tells you something you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. You get ready. You get ready to fire off a cock a doo doo. <laughs> you get ready. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> but this is what I need you to understand, church. It is important for us to acknowledge we need a rooster in our lives. Amen? You don't believe me, right? But I tell you what, I got a word for you today that if you will take this word today and you will take it home and you will chew on it, I'm here to tell you, you come to church next week. <laughs> Matthew 20, Matthew 4, don't turn there, don't turn there. I'm just going to set the stage for you. Matthew 4, listen to this. Again, Matthew 4, 7, no, 8. Again, the devil took him upon an exceedingly high mountain. Mm -hmm. Come on, boy. Look at here. I, we can preach right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And listen. Again, the devil took him high up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, talking to the devil, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Amen. 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 Now Matthew 6, 23. Then Peter, matter 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but mindful of men. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I put those two scriptures out here, because I need you to see something there. That, G that Peter is telling Jesus, Hey, don't worry about it. This is not going to happen. This is not going to take place. And I want you to know something that Jesus turned around and called him the devil. <laughs> he called him the devil. And the reason I read the first scripture is because it was the same voice. The same voice that Jesus heard on the mountaintop is the same voice he heard coming out of Peter. 
And there was something about that voice that Jesus said, get behind me, devil. Because all you're worried about is yourself, not about me. You see, Peter wasn't ready to suffer. Peter was trying to take the easy road. But can I tell you something, friends, this morning? There ain't nothing easy about being a Christian. That's right. That's right. I used to think, well, they used to say when I was incarcerated that uh, uh, Christians was weak. But I tell you what, it takes a, high, a lot of more strength for me to walk away from you than it does for me to pop you in your head one time. <laughs> it takes a lot more strength for me not to look. So there ain't nothing weak about me. I just know the voice I hear. <laughs> mm. Matthew 26. You can turn there if you want. Now listen. I can't promise you how this is going to go. Okay? But listen to this. Matthew 26, verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before thee into Galilee. And Peter, Peter again. <laughs> Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made. <laughs> Come on. Right? And Peter, he done stuck his foot in his mouth. That old, I will never stumble. How dare you, Jesus? Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I would not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Oh, wow. Roosters walking around here like yeah, they own the yeah, place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on. Ah. Here we find the disciples after Jesus has just instituted, listen to this, the Lord's Supper. After un uncovering the betrayal of Judas, here we find the disciples sitting in a room all huddled around Jesus. Jesus has just exposed Judas. He, and now all of a sudden there's a church fight going on. Everybody wants to know who's going to be the greatest when Jesus is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like a church fight to me. Yeah. <laughs> First there's betrayal. Now there's arguing, disputing who's going to be the greatest among you. Come on now. And then all of a sudden the rooster pops up and Peter says, Lord, I'll never leave you. I'll die for you, Jesus. Wow. After uncovering Judas and after settling this dispute about who's going to be the greatest, we find one of the saddest moments in Peter's life. He is confronted by the very Lord himself. And he says, by the time the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. Wow. Yeah. Can I tell you something, friends? Don't let your mouth overload mm -hmm. yeah. your chest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use chest. <laughs> Don't let your mouth outwit you. Because Jesus said, when the shepherd is smoke, the sheep going to scatter. And I'm here to tell you, friends, if you want to make this walk a good walk, if you want to finish well, if you want to be a good steward, and listen, and I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to, uh, what's the word, uh, when you, uh, 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 when people, Favor to, uh, listen, I'm not trying to win, folks, okay? I'm here to preach the word. Preach. And this is what I want you to know something. If you're going to make it in this Christian walk, stay connected to your pastor. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because if there ain't no pastor, the sheep scatter. That's right. Amen. That's, right. That's a side note for whatever reason. Amen. 
The sheep will scatter when there's no pastor. And Jesus made it plain to the 12 disciples that as soon as I'm gone, y'all gonna split. For it must have been to be foretold by Jesus that you're gonna deny him. Wow. How painful that Jesus is gonna look at you in your face and say, You're gonna deny me. Wow. You're gonna deny me. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. 2 1 Corinthians 10 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. That's right. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You know what take heed means? It means to be aware of what's going on. That's right. Mm -hmm. Be aware of what's going on. Be aware of the source of the tactic that's being used against that's right. you. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Peter was talking out of his ears. Because he didn't know the tactic that was being used against him. And this being said, there are so many churches operating under the authority that is not of, of the Lord, it's of somebody else. Amen. That's right, that's right. Take heed lest he fall. To take heed is that I am aware of what is at stake. I am aware of what is or who is the root of this temptation or of this. Yeah. Church, we cannot operate, listen, we cannot operate under the pretension of thinking that you will never fall. Mm -hmm. right. We cannot live under the pretension that you will never fall. Yeah. Right. Somebody will make it. Fried chicken out of you. <laughs> Walk around here with your chest stuck out like that. I talked to a brother that's incarcerated the other day. Oh, and he just, uh, he just standing barking. I said, you keep barking. Because I know a play this one. <laughs> They'll bark back. You keep on, rooster. Because you're going to run into another rooster one day or another. That's another, that's another story. Right? Let us not live under the pretension of thinking that I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like this. No. 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 <laughs> or let me not live under the pretension that I'm superior to others. Or that I'm superior to the brother or sister that sits next to me. That's going through the same thing that I'm going through. But they're just not bold enough to talk about it. Let us not live under the pretension that I know everything about everybody. Come on. Proverbs 16, 18, 9 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. It is better to be of humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Wow. Amen. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of humble spirit with lowly, with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. And friends in church, I'm here this morning to tell you that the Bible denounces pride. Amen. Oh yes, 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 yes. The Bible denounces the rooster. You know why? Because it's on the God's hate list. Yeah, it is. God has a hate list. I know. <laughs> Preachers don't say that. That's so why we're going to read it. Proverbs 6, 17, 16 and 17. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift and running to evil. And number seven, a false witness 
who speaks lies and who sows discord among the brethren. Wow. That's a hate list. Amen. You want to make it? Go through that checklist. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a checklist for you. The Bible denounces pride. Here's why. Because pride involves me placing my own revelation over God's. Amen. That's right. Pride is when I elevate myself against the, re the very revelation of God. This is why Jesus told Peter, get away from me. You don't know what's going down. You don't know what's up. You don't know what I'm about to endure. You don't know what I'm about to accomplish. Peter was worried about himself trying to bring on Jesus his own revelation. And Jesus said the book was written about me, not about you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's that's pride. Yeah. Placing my own reasoning powers above the revelation of God leads me to hell. Mm -hmm. We took the devil. That's another message. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand, take heed, lest he fall. First, Luke 22. It's really the same story. I'm just, I, I like it better than Luke. Luke 22, 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Mm -hmm. But he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the spruster shall not crow this day before you would deny me three times that you know me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Listen. The rooster is not your enemy. Satan is. Satan is Think about this for a second. The rooster is not your enemy. Simon. Simon. But Jesus named him Peter. But now he addresses him by Simon, Simon, teaching us, church, that he's going to fall. Right? Jesus is proving it to him again. You will fall. You will revert back to who you were before I met you. Simon, Simon. Can I tell you something? When you get away from God, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. you will go back yep. mm -hmm. to who you used to be. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you know. That's right. Other than God. Yeah. And when you leave your only source, you have but one place to go. Okay. And the scripture says that when Jesus was gone, all the disciples went back to what they were accustomed to doing. Yeah. And we've already established that Peter ran his mouth a lot. Mm -hmm. And that Peter was a violent man outside of God. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing more dangerous than a man or a woman of God that has lost touch with God and has reverted back to themselves. Because not only will you go back to yourselves, you will draw a crowd with you. That's right. Because the Bible says seven times. Right. Man. Mm. This is good, friends. Did you know that you can be on the mountaintop on Sunday morning and in the valley Sunday night. <laughs> on the mountaintop Sunday morning, singing the songs, waving your arms, doing 
the Holy Ghost shuffle and Sunday night you don't have enough Holy Ghost to make it five hours Simon, Simon, he says. Satan has to sift you. Almost titled this message, Sifting Causes Drifting. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The devil has to ask to get at you. Right? We see it in the story of Job. Listen. The devil is the devil, but he's God's devil. Yeah, that's right. The devil is the devil, but he's God's devil. And as long as you're not an orphan, like my wife said, that means, some, I believe 103 says, there was benefits. Right? I am an heir to the promises of God. As long as I'm with God. That's right. That's right. You can't be in the rain with no umbrella and expect mm -hmm. to stay dry. Right. That's right. The same thing with God. You can't go outside of the circle of influence of God and expect Him. That's right. Now, not to say He won't get you because He will. Remember, I said this a couple of weeks ago, the permissive will of God. It's the perfect permissive will of God, and He will allow you outside from under the umbrella. Go ahead and get wet if you want. Go ahead and get sun scorched if you want. You don't have to remain under the presence or under the shadow or under the wing of the Almighty. You have the very right to go and do what you want. Yeah. If Satan is asking to sift you, you worth something. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's something on the inside of you that you have. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the devil doesn't want it to be exposed because when That's he right. does, That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm gonna say this again, and you've heard me say it many times. A buzzer will not eat. Another buzzer. <laughs> right? right? When's the last time you've seen a buzzer eating another buzzer? <laughs> if you do see it, stop and take a picture of it. Because I've been preaching this for about 10 years. <coughs> a buzzer would not... My daughter said, but I see him on the side. And I said, yeah, because he was eating in the middle of the road. <laughs> it ain't because he was eating another buzzer. And it's the same, and listen, if you are the devil, he ain't gonna sift you, he needs you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But if you got something on the inside of you, if you have something you've been a good steward with, if you're about to advance the kingdom of God, if you're about to bring uh, uh, lost souls to the kingdom, if you're about to give a million dollar offering to the church, <laughs> right? The Lord is, I mean, the devil's gonna sift you, man. If you're about to do something for the kingdom of God, he's going to sift you. And guess what? God sifts us, right? Listen, God sifts us, takes the bad out, and leaves the good in. The devil sifts us, takes the good out, puts the bad in. If you have something to offer the kingdom of God, you will be sifted. Jesus is telling Peter, get ready, get ready, here. Yes. Yep. If you're not being sifted, if you're not being tested, if you're not being messed up or whatever it is, if yeah. you need to repent. <laughs> yeah. Because the devil is scared of the kingdom of God. Right. The right. devil is afraid of a man or a God who's going to preach truth. The devil is afraid of a man or a woman that is going to preach Holy Ghost. Right. 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 Jesus is implying to Peter, get ready, get ready because it's coming. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that the enemy was after Peter was because Peter was about to do something yeah. mm -hmm. world changing. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. 
32. But I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. wow. mm, John 17. Just read those prayers. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. side note. Man, John 17. Read those <coughs> prayers. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Listen. Mm -hmm. He says, I didn't pray that you, that you not fall. I didn't pray that you not fall. I didn't pray that you not fall short. I didn't pray that you not make a mistake. He said, no, I didn't pray all that. I prayed that you don't lose your faith when you fall. Yeah. Because there's a big difference. Because I've, fell, I've, I've fallen before. Amen? I've said something before. A matter of fact, uh, to be honest with you, for the record, uh, I think I've been serving the Lord for, I, I don't know, I would say 20 years. And I've cursed twice. Twice. I, I have. Like literally. One time I said it, we were going to Victoria. Her thing just, just slipped out. And I was like, where in the world did that come from? Right. Yeah. And my, mom, my wife just looked at me like, let's get the oil out. Right? But I, I went half that. And, and you know what? And I've gotten angry. Right? And, and I don't know, y'all, y'all don't get angry. I've gotten angry. I've been frustrated before. I felt discouraged before. I felt like I was being sifted and sifted and sifted and sifted. But the Lord prayed for me that my faith not fail. That's right. Amen? That I get up. Yeah. Amen? And the rooster come out. Because I'm a man of God. An imperfect man of God. The psalm says, oh wretched man that I am. Paul said, I'm the chief of sinners. But I pray that your faith not fail you. You can fail and still have faith, but I'm not giving you a license to fail. But I'm here to tell you that you, you will fail. And you will fall short. And you might slip up and say something you don't really mean. And you might look at somebody the way you're not supposed to look at them. And you might get frustrated when they cut in front of you in life. Then things like this will take place. But let not your faith fail you. Because there's something greater on the inside of you. And guess what it is? To strengthen your brother. To strengthen your sister. To yes. Yes. Come on. Purpose. Purpose. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor. There's purpose in my life. You know, I posted them pictures the other day on Facebook, right? 17 years when I was in the county jail. And then, when, you know, all that, I posted that. And uh, one of the missionaries from uh, Ernie Peacock, uh, he, he put on there, man, a bloody nose for the devil. And I was like, amen. <laughs> amen, right? Thank God. Amen. And this is when there is purpose in our lives. I'm here to tell you, you will fail and you will be tempted and you will. People will talk about you. People will say things about you. People will discredit your testimony. People will do all kinds of things. But guess what? Away with you, Satan. Get behind me, Satan, because I have a job to do. I need to strengthen my brothers. Yeah. I need to strengthen my sisters. Yeah. I need to strengthen my community leaders. I need to strengthen my schools. I need... That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Good word. Mm. If you're being sifted, the job is not done. If you're being sifted, the job is not over. That's right. That's right. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Get ready. And when you return to me, strengthen your brothers. Jump to 54. 2254. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together. Peter sat among them, and a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him. This man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I don't know him. Mm -hmm. Right? The rooster. Mm -hmm. Woman, I don't know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently 
affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're saying. And immediately while he was still mm -hmm. speaking, the rooster crowed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Mm -hmm. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. how he said to him before, before the rooster crows, mm -hmm. you will deny me three times. Mm -hmm. So Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Peter got his rooster. Mm -hmm. We all have a rooster in us. But on the flip side of that, your rooster is to warn you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Before the rooster crows, before the rooster crows twice, I believe he says, you're going to deny me three times. Can I tell you something? Peter denied Christ three times. Rebuked Christ mm -hmm. once. Made a vow to him to, to follow him all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. And he failed at all of them. Mm -hmm. Why? It wasn't because he was wicked. It was because he was weak. Mm -hmm. And today I tell you, friends, when you are weak, he is he strong. Is strong. That's right. No you are weak in your own eyes, in your own strength. You are weak. Peter denied the Lord out of weakness, not wickedness. Peter wasn't a bad God. He was a weak God who refused to adhere or take heed of the warning of God. Can I tell you? God will send you a warning multiple times. You remember when I chased that guy that one night? I told my wife, lock the door, I'm going after him. I was uh, all behind H-E-B in Yoko, like right there on, uh, I came on the little road, Matthew Street, that little road out of me. A guy was walking, I felt he jump out the car and I followed him. And I was just, I was inviting him to church. And the guy was walking back the whole time. I don't get out. I don't get out. I don't get out. I don't get out. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I stopped right there where I was at. I let him go. But I pray, Lord, don't let this be his last warning. That's right. That's right. Don't let this be his last warning. Because the Lord will warn you and warn you and warn you. And one day, the Lord will stop warning you. That's right. That's right. Peter was strong in his own sight, yet spiritually weak and unable to resist opposition when it presented itself. Yeah. Unable. On the outside, you know. Inside. Later on, we learned that Peter became known as the pillar to the church. Amen? Yeah. Peter became a pillar to the church on this rock, on this confession, Peter. This very thing that the Lord has revealed to you, Peter. I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Mm -hmm. But what had to happen? What had to happen? He had to hear the rooster. Yeah, that's right. What if the rooster would have not crowed? Think about this. Mm -hmm. What if the rooster would have... He's on his own. In order to advance, in order to move, in order to make transition, in order to go places you've never been, you have to hear the rooster. Peter denied Christ three times and the third time he denied God such a way the Bible says he even cursed he swore to the guy and he got to just imagine what he said to the guy not a part of him 
But he heard the rooster. Look what he says. I do not know the man. The Bible says, immediately, while he was still speaking, I don't think he finished saying, I don't know him. That's what the Bible says, right? It says, and immediately, while he was still speaking, yes. wow, the Lord will find you in your You know what I love more than anything? When a drunk man comes to me. Hmm. While he's still speaking, the rooster will crow. Let somebody come up to me, drunk, stoned, cracked out, whacked out, whatever it is, and see if I don't preach to them. See if I don't lay my hands on them. Because while they're still speaking, the rooster will crow. While you in your junk, the rooster will crawl. Yeah, right. While you messed up, the rooster will crawl. Mm -hmm. While you're doing things you're not supposed to be doing, the rooster will crow. But the question remains, can you hear the rooster? Right. Yeah. I went to bed last night thinking this. What did Jesus' eyes represent when he looked at Peter? Because the Bible says that when Peter denied him the third time, that Jesus looked at him. I went to bed asking myself, what did Jesus' eyes represent? What were they saying to Peter? Was it, you missed it? That was your last chance? Or was it a... I told you so. I told you. I told you. And that's what I believe. The Lord, when He looked at Him like that, I believe He said, I told you. I told you, Peter. You're going to deny me three times. Here's what I want to finish with. Bible says that immediately, right, Jesus looked at him and he wept bitterly. Mm -hmm. Wow. The Bible says he took off weeping. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, friends, there's so many Christians that are plateaued. Mm -hmm. Plateaued. Because they ain't no weeping. There ain't no weeping in the church. Right. Oh God. No, no rooster. Yeah. No remembering the word. No repentance. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we can hear the rooster and we can remember the word, we'll repent. Okay. And and Peter. After doing all of this, stood boldly after he was filled with the Holy Spirit and declared a message that went along the lines like this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But he says repent so that times of refreshing That's right. will come. That's right. So you can be revived, Peter. So you can be revived, Brother Sylvester. So you can be revived, Brother Chris. So you can be revived, Tito. So you can be revived, Pastor Webb. So you can be revived, he says. Hear the rooster. Remember the words. And repent from your sins. So times of refreshing will That's come. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's stand to our feet today. Amen. I want to encourage somebody today. Oh, or listen. I'm going to just... I want to listen to this. Look what the Lord showed me. And I'm going to get out of the way. If we, if we keep reading in the scripture. I believe the rooster is a form of Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, 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 in that moment. 
Because who in the world would have known to put a rooster there? Right? I mean, okay, the rooster wasn't following Peter around, right? The, the Lord said the rooster's going to throw up. I believe that at that specific moment, Jesus, the Lord, right, gave that opportunity through that rooster to reach Peter because there was a job to do. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to this. But go down a little further. And we find Judas, the betrayer, who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And the Holy Spirit came, Miss Beverly, and told him, and convicted him, and condemned him. And he brings the 30 pieces of silver, and he throws them back at the leader's feet. And he says, I have wronged the Lord. Right? Remember that story? What happened to Judas? What does the Bible say? The Bible says, Judas went outside, and he hung himself. Right? Because there was never no repentance. There was never no remembering the words That's of right. God. But when you've heard the word, right? Yes. When you've heard the rooster, and you remember the words, and you repent, listen, Judas hung himself out of despair, out of regret, out of condemnation. Peter repented. Yes. Yes, yes. I want to encourage you, friends. If you've heard that rooster, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and a time of yes. refreshing will come on your life. A realignment will take place in your life. Things will begin to make sense to you. God wants to use you. God wants to use your family. God wants to use you in the very best way he can and he can only do it if you will allow him to do it yeah. Amen. Yes. that's right let's bow our heads right here Hallelujah. I'm going to challenge you today have you heard the rooster Whether it was through the rooster, was it through the pastor, was it through a friend, was who reminded you of what you need to be doing? And maybe not, maybe today you heard it. Not outside, but today you came to church and you weren't expecting to hear the rooster, but you heard the rooster say to you today. Remember the words of God. Repent that you may strengthen your brother, that you may strengthen those in your family, that you may strengthen those in your circle of influence, that you may strengthen your co-workers, that you may strengthen those in your community, that you may strengthen the school, that you may strengthen everyone that needs to be strengthened. And if that is you right there, I'm not going to call you out. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand right there where you're at. You say, Pastor, I feel it today. I'm ready today, Pastor. I've heard the rooster. I've heard the rooster. I see those hands. I see those hands. Thank you. Let's pray. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us so much that you allow us to hear the rooster. Lord, forgive us for our shortcomings, our failures, and our faults. But today, Lord, give us the strength that our faith will never fail us. But it push us to the things you have in store for us. Amen and amen.